Hey everybody, Kenny here. Welcome back to our last epoch playthrough. We are currently trying to complete our first empowered timeline. The last time we got about a third of the way through, maybe a little more. Yeah, so we're currently working on the Black Sun. Once we know whether the rewards are worth it to bother doing these, then we'll go and finally run through the dungeons to test out how that works. Go for the set item here. One in each direction. And the mage. Not happening. Not happening. Remember to always hide the loot from now on. Loot is deadly at this level. <laughs> Okay. Here. E or unique? Unique. Death's Embrace. I have not found that one before. Which is surprising because I'm pretty sure I found because <laughs> I've I've definitely found like a big scythe in Legacy, and I've definitely found at least one other big scythe and actually I think a small scythe and a big scythe in in this cycle. The fact that there is more than that. <laughs> a lot of scythes. Try to take on this uh mage over here. Oh, 
What did you drop? Crystal skill. Oh, thank you. I have not found this spear before either. Staff. Not found this staff before. Oh, yeah, I've gotten this before. I have multiple of those in Legacy. Yes. That I will throw away and then we'll do the other ones. So the Invoker Scorching Grasp. Ignite chance, some fire damage over time, increase flame ward, increase fire cast speed, and then all the same elemental stuff as the other pieces that we've gone over. Take care. Ah. Go. Firm. I guess I didn't find any other scythes. For some reason, I thought I found other unique scythes. And so the Death's Embrace, two-handed axe, melee damage, necrotic penetration, minion necrotic penetration, increased minion damage. Yeah, increased melee, critical strike multiplier. This bonus damage from taken from critical strikes gain a stack of harrowing claim when you use harvest and hits at least one enemy. Using harvest will while at at least two stacks of harrowing consumes them to perform grim harvest, granting 200% more melee damage and 20% increased area effect, but consumes mana and health. 23 mana consumed, 29% of current health consumed. That is dangerous. Wow. Is that a range? It is. Yes, yeah, so we got closer to the high range on that. As you'd want to get as close to 18% as possible for this to be a good one. I'm consuming that much health and mana just to like deal extra damage with harvest. That's not <laughs> That is not a good unique. <laughs> and the Jasper Searing Pride. Two handed staff. Melee and spell damage. Plus one to melee attacks. Hmm. So is it saying plus one, like, uh, you know, so 94 melee damage. So it's saying like plus one to the melee damage of the attack, or is it saying like plus one to skills that have the tag that is melee attacks? You know, like you get an extra, extra level. Hmm. Don't know. Melee damage, block chance, block effectiveness, plus two to fr flame reeve, plus two to surge, plus two to enchant weapon. When you use a melee attack, it hits at least one enemy. You gain a stack of Searing Blades for 16 seconds. Stack of Searing Blades grants plus two fire damage and plus tw and 20% melee ignite chance. Pretty good. This is a good unique. I guess I'll go for this since we only have one of these keys so far. Not 
not happening. It's a lot of melee attack. I won't though. Did we find them? Finally found them. We did not. <laughs> My heart is broken. I haven't found, well, maybe I found a pair of these in in this cycle before, but like I found a bunch of these in Legacy, but these has the near potential on it. Fighting chance, gives armor, melee damage, damage taken, increased damage taken. Health gain on kill, increase movement speed. I mean, it's not a great peak, but. See if we can do anything with him. Do that one there. I don't know if I found that ring before. Not in my image, but you might have one sitting in our stash.
See the thing now? Poor corruption. Pitiful. Absolutely pitiful. Yeah, so after this one, we should know whether or not we have to do them in order. Because if we do, then the fact that the other two are marked as optional well, doesn't make sense. did it again. Damn it. Definitely found that one before. Not happening. Yeah, so the solution to like the solution to the UI bug is like to hide something while you're hovering over what while you have a tooltip open. Oh, what really? What did I get killed by? Like the one that I was attacking was still mid animation. the solar ascendant again but one of those was the solar ascendant i don't know what it is that the solar ascendants do to kill me that's the second time that we've been killed by one of those and i haven't seen what it you know, what it is it did Not 
not happening. So now I see what it is that did it. And that, you know, like this, I'm going to put on the devs for this because that's actually bullshit. Like that attack type, it creates a, like a little void circle on the ground. But void is a damage type that is very dark. And that area is very dark. So if you're darting your eyes around the screen, trying to look out for actual animations, you can't see it. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad game dev. <laughs> Could fit right there. So in case I haven't found one of these before in this uh, cycle, Renegade's Will, melee damage, plus 5 to Vengeance, which is a, a Sentinel skill, 38% uh, more damage with hits with Vengeance against bosses and rare enemies, 45% increased melee attack speed, plus 5 to attributes, and increased movement speed. I have one of those right there. I'm just going to sell this. A ring I have not found before. The free bore is persistence. That gives static resistance, ward to create threshold, armor, armor for totems, increased intelligence, increased health regen, health regen for totems. That bonus is plus two to all totem skills. Yeah, so I don't have any other free boars. And the mask is Isadora's Revenge. I have not seen before. There's armor, static penetration, stun avoidance, health, increased stun duration of chill applied to necrotic spells. The two set guarantees that you apply damn on hit with necrotic spells. Three set increases necrotic penetration with damned and increases on a efficiency with necrotic spells. I'm not sure why I kept this as a Doris here. I have one of these and yeah, I have the gloves and the belt in 
Legacy. Just lost this one. No, why hold on to that? Yes. That's right. I am buying these again. Buying them till I get to 150. Take care. I do not like this tile set with this enemy type. Because we died so many times, we actually went backwards instead of forwards. And the game crashed. That was very mean of the game to go and crash on us when we did one without any any issues coming up.
Bad pool, game. Bad pool. Go for the item first, and then I'll go for the key. Although we did break. We did break the... At 450. Did break it, so you do have to do them in order. So this is stupid. Why is this a thing? This isn't optional. I can't do this without doing these. <laughs> it's only optional if I can skip these. <laughs> Another Invoker's Ring, and Sunforge Curus. We have not found that in Legacy, and we have not found that here. Yes. Oh, interesting. Ooh, my helmet popped up. Both bad. Yes. Take care. Okay, so the Sunforge Curus. Armor, endurance, fire damage. Even more armor, fire resistance. Chance to forge a weapon when hit. Increase fire damage per forged weapon. Yeah, so this is a. A forge guard uh, that item oh, there we go yeah sentinel forge strikes mother's wrath for the two set maximum forge weapons for the three set
arm plate. I haven't found any of the other parts of that. After this one, I need to make sure I take a look at the map to at the you know, you know the uh, timeline map to figure out like what the different areas look like in the timeline because I do not want to be entering areas like this anymore. Even though, like, you know, like, this isn't, like, really a bad one because, you know, there's, uh, ice enemies here. But, like, this kind of area with void enemies is incredibly dangerous for the fact that there's a bunch of enemies on the screen. I can't see any ground effect stuff they're doing. Unless I'm, like, really paying attention. Very bad at paying attention. I don't think I misread that, but we'll check it when we get back to town. Storm Weaver. Storm Weaver. I have not found this dagger before. Firming. Yeah. I have not found this before. Weaver. Melee damage, crit chance, extra melee damage. Chance to blind, exaggerating, reduce shift distance, increase cooldown speed for shift. Also four. For me, up nothing but trash here. Mind you, not like I have uh, any reason to go and reset the timeline. The whole point is to get the thing that converts it to Although I guess it really depends on like what they consider bosses. As if Uh, 
multiple humming bees and legacy. Because if they if they only count the final boss of any apogee of frozen light. Oh. Where is that coming from? I definitely didn't pick that up and there are any other geeks on the screen. So it seems that that, that bug goes much deeper than I thought it did. It's not showing us something that we happen to hover over, those on the ground. It's literally giving us a random tooltip. When that bug happens, it's a random tooltip. Yeah, but if they only count... Stop popping up on the ground every time I'm trying to say this. If they only count... Bosses as, like, you know, like the final boss of each timeline. Then farming corruption would be stupid. Absolutely terrible stupid. But by the same note, like even if it they count like the other like side like you know like other quest bosses inside of the timeline. Even if they count the other bosses that you can encounter inside of a timeline. There's still like a maximum of like three bosses. Or like three of that thing. If they count it. That's one. Oh, did find that word. Weird. Thought I only picked up that, like the bee sword, the humming bee, humming bee. Weird. It's humming bee with legendary potential. Humming bee melee attack, increased melee attack speed, increased movement speed, ward gain on hit, chance to, chance per ward to gain haste. Elemental attacks deal increased damage per 200 ward. So if you have a build that can scale a crap load of ward, then that can be good. Apogee of Frozen Light. I have not found before. Yeah, I have not found it before. The Apogee of Frozen Light. 
melee damage, increased cold damage, or melee cold damage. Plus three to necrotic and minion. Oh, cold and necrotic minion spells. Oh, minion skills. The necrotic minion skill. Hmm. Transfer minions to chill attackers when hit. Minions deal increase deal more cold and necrotic damage to chilled enemies. When your minion dies, you gain a stack of frozen vengeance. You hit an enemy with a melee attack. Bend the stack of frozen vengeance to grant all of your minions frenzy and more damage. More damage against chilled enemies. And freeze normal enemies and magic enemies. Complex. Yes. If you use like the fire ones, you can see the fire thing. There's a very clear distinctive thing. So the so, so activating those pillar things is not an instant action type thing. Your character actually stops to do it. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the uh, with like the little like sight pillar things, like you can't, you know, you can't tell by looking at them what the area is gonna be. Cause they all have the same. Graphic.
not happening. Not asking. Have a dream thorn and legacy to toss that one. Yes. So dream thorn is a two-handed greatsword. Gives melee damage, melee void damage, void penetration, block chance, chance to block to gain uh, chance to gain a health. Well, not a chance. Like you gain health when you block and increase block effectiveness. Oh, I don't have it in Legacy, but I may have it here. Hammer. I also do not have in Legacy. Take care. Yeah, so another bow that I did not have. I wonder if I have all of the bows now. <laughs> so Talons of Valor. Bow damage, increased bow damage, crit chance, increased falconry, uh, increased to falconry and dive bomb. Oh, di falconry, dive bomb, and aerial assault. And when you critically strike with your falcon, well, no, when you critically strike an enemy, the Falcon gains extra melee damage and Falcon abilities recover their cooldown. Nice. That amulet. I don't have in Legacy, but I'm pretty sure I have one over here. Yeah. That one has legendary potential. This one does not. Oh, this one also has legendary potential. Hmm. And the Hammer of Laurent. I check that. Yeah, nothing there. Yeah, so I have not found this before. The Hammer of Laurent. Two handed Great Mace. Melee damage. Chance to go on hit. Increase melee damage. Plus one to physical damage per level. Nice. Uh, increased melee stun chance per level. K 
scaling weapon. This has more forging potential. Don't ask ten. Have nine, that has ten. That's a four. That's four. We load up twice this session. Better than I hoped. Font of the Erased. Definitely have not found that before. Yeah, not found that before.
Okay, so that's all the gloves. So the font of the erased is elemental resistance, increased health and mana, 25% of mana spent gain this ward, gain ward per missing health if your current ward is lower than your missing health, and it has Weaver's Will. Not a good amount of Weaver's Will, so I won't bother trying that out. Interesting. It's a little better. Close. We are close. You need a hundred and eleven more. There's only two to three more runs. So this is something I didn't consider. The area can start either in day or night. That's rolled randomly. But even if it's a map type that you that you want to run because it has a good visibility. Good roll as the night version and still give you bad visibility.
not happening. So I finished the first book in uh, the Age of Madness trilogy by Rob Crombie today. I do have to say, I actually regret having read the first Law trilogy first. Because even though, you know, like, both chronologically and in terms of like when he actually wrote them. Like the Age of Madness trilogy comes after the First Law trilogy. But for some reason like he wrote it in a way where I like guess like he was expecting that most of the people who read it were gonna be people who didn't read First Law. So like, like all of like the big like uh, reveals and stuff, are just things that you know if you read the first law. You know, it's just lore, which I find very strange that you would go and yeah you know, and write a follow up series that way. And you know, so like basically, if I hadn't read first law, then I would have appreciated uh, the first book in Age of Madness way more. I can't pass that one up. The eight five five two. So 40,000 per book. Yes. This one, we will have our access to well, our ability to go and try to hunt down Raye. Too easy. 
And hopefully it'll be enough over that... Oh, I mean, we, we do know that we don't... You know, we can't go below any threshold we've reached. Yeah, we can lose... Uh, like, we can lose stability, but we can't... Like, once we've reached one of the... Quest thresholds, like, we can't get below that. So, that's good. No matter how many times we die, we can... We don't have to worry about losing our ability to go and try again. Calamity, I definitely have one of those in Legacy. Yes. So, Calamity is a circlet that gives mana, spell damage, increased fire damage, sent night with fire skills. Makes it that when you kill an enemy with a fire skill, you take damage for seconds. And in increased fire cast speed. This amulet I have not found before. Take care. Yeah, not found this before. The serpent's milk gives increased attack speed and throwing attack speed. Hands to poison on hit. Minions deal less poison damage. Poison damage, health regen, poison resist. Hmm. I'm curious what the use case for this is. Because it basically guarantees that your your minions will poison an enemy. But it won't be for much. So the intention isn't for the min, you know, the poison to deal damage or the enemy to be poisoned trigger something else. I'm not sure what the something else is. And because of the name, I would think that it has something to do with, uh, I can't remember the name of it right now, but the Primalist has a spear skill, a poison spear skill that I can't remember the name of. Okay, so you can just skip straight to that. So it is optional. Just that you have to do these in order if you want to do the optional. But for this, you don't have to. That was rude.
this hate, this despair. Hmm. Like, I think the pattern has changed. I don't seem to be able to avoid it past the second one. So it's actually technically easier to dodge it now. You just can't do the circle run anymore. Ah, game crashed. That was upsetting. I was doing very well that one.
Why? Like I feel slower. Or why? Oh, so we can get knocked down below. Damn. Yes. I swear that there's some kind of like mechanic in this game that makes it that like being within a certain range of an enemy slows you down. I just keep feeling like I'm moving like really slow. Vengeance 
Is it that the pattern puzzle, like the solution to the pattern puzzle changes each time? Like, is it that sometimes it's, you know, forward, back, forward, back, but sometimes it's the, like, ring, like the ring method. don't like that. Not in the blast zone, but it keeps treating me like I'm in the blast zone. That's two times that it's done it to me now. They're hitting me when I'm not in the blast zone. I'm not playing online, so it can't be like a latency thing. Vengeance. 
What? That is nonsense. That is absolute nonsense. I got hit by... So here's the pie I was standing in. Here's the other pie. I got hit by this pie while I was still in this pie. The blast zone is bigger than it looks. Seriously, how I was here. How did I get hit by this one here when I was here? You see like this gap here, this amount of gap that was there and I still got hit by the one that was here. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank <laughs> you. 
Really? Oblivion burns within me. For some reason, I'm building stability instead of losing it. if you get an amount of ability for dealing certain thresholds of damage to bosses. Thank 
vengeance will be paid. Hates this despair. Oblivion burns within me. This world earned its ruin. Do you deny it? My shadow will cover this world once more. Oh, incredibly annoying. I do the same thing every time, but sometimes I'm just slower. I don't know why. I'm just checking to make sure there's nothing like if my mouse cursor is a certain distance away from my character that they move slower than if it's further. Definitely doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, obviously sometimes I have haste and other times I don't, but that's not what I mean. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. How does it hit me? How does it hit me? Why is it that it's further in than again, like it's further out than where the actual telegraph is? You can see I'm clearly out of it.
He's pulling some dark pattern combos on me. Not happening. Oh, you know what? Actually, so I finally see what it is. So it actually is a haste thing. I forgot that the bird can give me haste. I can gain haste when the bird hits. Sometimes the bird hits and I get haste. That's why sometimes I'm faster than others. Even though I haven't been attacking. You saw that the haste ran off right before I got past that threshold. That's what's been happening. Behold, 
All the times that I've survived that are because I happen to have haste. Otherwise, you don't have, even if you're at the edge of it, you don't have enough time to get to the other side. Which doesn't make sense. There's no guarantee players are going to have haste as a just a thing that they have going in their build. can't penalize players for not having like large amounts of movement speed in their build. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going back to my original opinion on it. Like, I don't think that... I don't think it's haste that was the thing. Like, I think that the interval that the... I think the interval that the attack hits on is fucked. There's not there's no guaranteed timing on how long is between like when like like the last one ends and the next one goes This 
hate, this despair, oblivion burns within me. Not happening. This world earns <laughs> not Not happening. My shadow will cover this world once more. Void resistance, even more health. Growing leech's health, health on block. If I get that void resistance, then that makes it that we. I mean, I'd like to get the more health. It would. But. I mean, health we can get other ways. Wood resistance. Like this is some. This is a limiter now. Like not having to think as much about this makes it that we can put more offensive stuff in our build, more health in our build, and stuff like that. That. Yeah. Do we got? Dark Shroud. Pride. Fundamental Criterion. I think I've seen that. Portail, we've definitely seen. Snowblind, I have in Legacy. So I don't know if like that means like the ranges of the ranges of the blessings went up. Twenty-five to forty. Yeah, so fifty-five to seventy-five. Yeah, so the empowered is uh, higher ranges on the blessings. So this was actually a kind of low void resist. You can actually go and if I empower. Storm one. Like I have the potential to get just max resistance from that 
and not even have to think about resist uh, that particular resistance in my gearing whatsoever. Very cool. Now we know all of that. has potential this does not that that does not have potential snow blind is a helmet that gives armor cold resist freeze multiplier more armor chance to chill with cold skills chance to blind the cold skills and you can't be not be blinded so both of those as I went over this last time, so I'm not going to go over it again, but as I do this, engineer potential, so that, this, one does not have potential, so let's go that, here, definitely don't have one of those there, I do not have one of those in Legacy either. Fundamental Criterion is a mage body armor. It gives armor. Gives you back ward based on mana you spend. Increase ward decay threshold. Increase runic invocation. Or damage while using a wand for invocations with Heo as their first rune. Save a staff. Gone. Damage while using a scepter for Ra. Damage for strength for Theo rune invocations. Dexterity. Increased damage for dexterity. Gone. Increased damage for attunement for raw. Neat. These. That also. Okay. So now that we've done an empowered timeline, understand how, you know, that, yeah, that gets just uh, like additional rewards and well, additional rewards, more, more XP, more, again, better uh, blessing. Pressing options when you complete them. They're definitely worth doing, but obviously, like, hard fought. But, you know, but because of how powerful those blessings are, it does make it that, you know, so I just went from this being my lowest resistance to it being, yeah, went from my lowest to my highest in one. So, like, you know, like, that, I mean, that, that can't be understated. Like, you know, like, now... Do I have void even on anything right now? I have void on the ring. I don't have void on the ring and on idols. But now I can go and move thing maneuver things around and it makes it that I can uh, be more effective in other areas now. Like I've opened up a lot of options just from that. You know, that's over 50. Oh, well, not over 50, but the 50. Oh, no, no, yeah. It's over 50. Almost almost 60 bonus, you know, 60 more, like, void that I can mess around with in my build. It means that, you know, like, I can go and turn that into health. I can turn that into armor. I can turn that into all kinds of things that are useful for us. So, this one. Next time, we're going to be finally starting up the dungeons. Do those dungeon runs, see what those are like. Like, and if you have to do them like tier by tier, then obviously like, they're going to go by very fast because we're absolutely 
like just stomping our way through these. That's gonna be it for this one. Thank you for stopping by and checking me out. Play through, appreciate you doing the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, be Victus, Arzu Damaris, and bye.